All right, you got your map of your deserts, right, and your rainforests, okay? What do we notice about the rainforests? Where are they located roughly? Around the equator, right? So on your map, if you want to draw or write the word equator or you want to write zero degrees, right? Most of the rainforests are found right around the equator. Okay, now yes, there are other rainforests like temperate rainforests. We're talking mostly tropical rainforests, okay? So most of them are located around the equator. What about the deserts? Right, so they're located around the Tropic of Cancer and the Tropic of Capricorn. Those are those other two lines on your map, right? So these are at 30 degrees north and 30 degrees south. Okay, so on your map, I would label zero degrees for the equator, that middle line, 30 degrees north and 30 degrees south. The reason they are located here is because of air currents, atmospheric currents, and that's what we're going to talk about today. Why are there deserts located where they are? Why are there rainforests located where they are? So you need your note packet. Anyone need one? Because they weren't here. All right, this is review. This is review from yesterday, okay? We talked, we talked about density. We said cold, dense air sinks, warm, less dense air rises, okay? Yep. Where? Uh, whatever that says, eddy or whatever, cooling, air rises, pressure degree. Yeah, we'll talk about that in a second. Isn't that? All right, water vapor. What do we know? What do we know about water vapor? So warm air can hold a lot more water. Okay, water vapor, cold air cannot. This is why it's really cool or really dry in the winter. Okay, these are the two big ones: adiabatic cooling and heating. Okay, as air rises, we know that the pressure decreases from the atmosphere. So the volume of the air is going to expand. Okay. And the temperature decreases as we go up as well. The reason we're talking about all of these is because they drive these currents. Okay. Don't worry too much about latent heat. It's just saying that when there's a phase change of water from water vapor to liquid, there's some energy that's released, okay? This is not that, I mean, important to know, okay? So if we look at this diagram, this diagram illustrates it as well. So we have our air, it's at 30 degrees, it's small. We have a lot of air pressure down here, right? Because air pressure is the weight of the air, okay? As we go higher up, we know that it cools, okay? The air is a lot cooler. It is also expanding, okay? So it's expanding and it's cooling, all right? As it goes down, it is compressing and warming. So as a result of this air heating and cooling, expanding, rising, we get what's called atmospheric convection currents, okay? Basically big currents of airflow, okay? You may have heard of like the jet stream, that's a type of atmospheric convection current, okay, or a type of atmospheric current. These currents are driven by the fact that the sun heats the earth unequally. So you can see that there are lots of different cells that we're going to talk about. These are all convection currents, okay, all of these different types of cells. All right, here's the first one, a Hadley cell. This is named after a guy. You have this written down already, okay? So a Hadley cell happens between 30 degrees north and 30 degrees south. And this is the reason why we have deserts at 30 degrees north and south, and we have rainforests at the equator, okay? Let me show you what happens, and then you can write this down. 
if we look at this diagram, here's what happens. Okay, we get our air. All right, at the equator, our sun is going to heat the air up, right? And it's going to cause it to rise because we know warm air typically rises, right? So it's going to heat up, okay? As it goes higher and higher, it's going to start to cool off, all right? As we know, cold air can't hold very much water. So what's going to happen is that water is going to rain down. Hence, we get rainy areas right by the rainforest, right by the equator. Okay. Now, it's going to move horizontally, okay? So it moves off to both sides, all right? You don't exactly need to know why, but basically the air is displaced, okay? It goes north and south. And then as this air comes back down, it sinks and it doesn't have any of that water vapor because it already rained it all out. And so it's really dry and it's going to be hot air now coming down that's really dry. And this is why we have deserts at 30 degrees north and 30 degrees south. So write this down, warm, humid air rises in the tropics. It then condenses, forms clouds, and then it rains down. And this is why we have our rainforests at the equator. We see this in this diagram down here as well, right? Our air, it's getting heated up by the equator, by the sun at the equator. It rises, causes the rain to fall, okay? Then it's going to move horizontally as it comes back down. It's going to warm, but it's already dry because it lost all of its rain. So that's why we get the deserts at 30 degrees. So... After it rains, the cold, dry air is displaced horizontally, basically meaning it is moved horizontally, okay, where it sinks back to the Earth's surface and is hot and dry. Which is why we get the deserts at 30 degrees north and 30 degrees south. All right, so we're gonna draw a diagram. Is everyone done writing? Okay. So you have this written down. So here's our diagram that we're gonna draw. We're gonna draw the equator. Thirty degrees north and thirty degrees south. So my air is going to rise, okay, as it rises, remember it's raining down, okay, so we get rain, reason we get rain is because this air is cooling. Remember the air gets displaced horizontally. Okay, and as it comes back down, it is dry and hot. So then we end up getting the deserts at 30 degrees north and 30 degrees south.
All right, so these are called Hadley cells, okay? Named after a guy, they're super important, probably the most important of the cells, but there are other cells as well. Okay, so flip to the next page. We get polar cells. These are at the poles, right? So they're the same type of currents where our air rises, comes back down. The poles are called cold deserts. So instead of forming a hot desert at 30 degrees, right, like with the Hadley cell, we are now getting deserts at the poles. So the poles are considered deserts because they don't get hardly any rainfall. They're really, really cold though. So we can see our polar cell up here. I'll draw the picture with you in a minute, the diagram. So these are between 60 and 90. And then in between those, we have feral cells. Again, this is after a guy, not Will Ferrell, but somebody else. And they're between 30 and 60. So between 30 and 60. So Hadley is 0 to 30, Farrell 30 to 60, Polar 60 to 90. So let's draw a diagram. You guys have this drawn on your sheet. I need you to add two extra lines because I didn't. Really? So we have 0, 30, 60, 90. So the first cells we have are the Hadley cells. So what does air do at the equator? It rises, right? So air rises at the equator. Right? It's going to go horizontally. And it always makes a circle, okay? It's like this air is recycled. So it'll always make a circle. So I'm going to put an H there for Hadley cells. You can put them on this side if you want, wherever. I'm going to do the polar cells next because I find those are the easiest to remember. So the polar cells, remember the air comes down at the poles because the poles are a desert. So the air is going to come up at 60, over, and then down at 90. And then the feral cells are in between. So you're going to use these arrows that are on either side here. So when you're drawing this, just draw the arrows going the same direction as the other cells. So like my orange arrow here, right? Same direction. We're just gonna make a cell inside there. When you're studying, you can practice drawing these, okay? Practice drawing them. 
quiz yourself. Can you draw them? Do you know where the deserts are and why they happen? What happens to the air, right? So the Hadley cells are the most important to know, okay? And then the feral and polar cells are after that, okay? But these determine why we have deserts and rainforests in particular areas. So the last thing I want to talk about is the rain shadow effect. You have this written down. Basically, here's what happens with the rain shadow effect. Same thing, but it's with a mountain in the middle. Okay, so here's what happens. We get the air coming in, right, up to a mountain. As it goes up the mountain, what's the temperature going to do? Decrease, right, because we know at the top of the mountain it's cold. What do we know about the amount of water that cold air can hold? Not a lot. So what's going to happen? It's going to rain. So on the way up the mountain, it's going to rain. All the rain's going to be gone. So that by the time it goes across the mountain, it's, it's going to be super dry. So what we get is one side of the mountain's really wet, and one side is really dry. Here's a picture of Washington. Here's a mountain range. Okay. Here's one side, right? This is obviously where it's going up and where it's raining. Here's the other side where there is no rain, right? So we get this same effect happening, though, in just a smaller scale with different topography. Okay. All right. Awesome. That's all I got for you today. If you have not handed in your solar insulation lab, make sure you do that. Keep those maps. They will be useful.